Hello and welcome to 100 Theatre Women from 51 to 75. <laughs> Naomi. Gemma. Which one is your 51st? Well, it's actually yours and I think it's Sophie Okonedo. Oh, it certainly is. It's mine. Sophie Okonedo. Known worldwide now for her film work but I loved her at the Young Vic um, in Arabian Nights directed by Dominic Cook. She was absolutely luscious and joyous and I'm so pleased with your career so far. Uh, number 52 is Angela de Castro who's a Brazilian clown. I first saw her in Slava's Snow Show and then was lucky enough to work with her on the development of a new project um, at the Old Vic and she was inspirational uh, as a woman and as a clown. Her openness, her confidence, her fearlessness, her humour, her freedom, she exudes a sense of freedom and I found her solo show um, working in development with her and her work in Slava Snow Show just to be mesmerising. <laughs> My next choice is the wonderful Mona Hammond, uh, who set up Tallower Theatre Company, um, I think in the late 70s, 80s, 80s, I think, sorry, I haven't done my research. Um, but I am celebrating her today for a fantastic production that was directed by Declan Donnellan of Fuente Over Huna, and she was brilliant in that. Thank you, Mona Hammond. Uh my next choice is the playwright Gertrude Jennings, mm. who was an actress under the name Gertrude Henriques, um, and then became a playwright. She was one of the suffrage playwrights, and then had a career that took her right up until the 1950s. She had over 45 plays produced in the West End. Um, a wonderful writer, very unsung. I've tried to collect as many of her plays as possible. They've always got great parts for women in them. They're very funny little mm. one-act farces, very light, um, great fun to do, and I, I find her work delightful. I love the fact that she was an actress turned playwright, I love the fact she was a suffragist, and I love the fact that she kept writing um, and that her plays are so delightful. If you see one, read it. <laughs> <laughs> My next choice was Ellen Terry. Um, there's nothing probably that I can say that would illuminate you any further apart from that she was an Edwardian actress and uh, towards the end of her life she toured around the world, I believe, uh, talking about Shakespeare's women. Um, there was recently Eileen Atkins' One Woman Show, which um, dramatised those lectures. I've always been very interested in her. Uh, she is John Gielgud's aunt, I believe, or perhaps great aunt. Again, research lets me down. But Ellen Terry, I've always been very interested in. Um, viva! My next choice was uh, Jodie May mm. for The Talking Cure at the National Theatre. Uh, she had a, a tricky, exposing role, but her intelligence just shone through, both um, in rehearsals and in performance. She was so detailed, she was so fearless. She really went for it, and she went for the emotional truth of it. Um, and I, I found it to be um, a gripping performance and even though I admired her work I was lost in the character I wasn't admiring it while she was doing it I just I left thinking reeling really from from the from the skill and um from the the her, her openness and her her desire to communicate and it was a wonderful production in the Cottesloe. My next choice is Mary Ward. Mary Ward co-founder with Joe Collins of uh, London's Chicken Shed Theatre, an inclusive theatre company. It began in the 70s, maybe 74, um, and it allowed or brought to the fore theatre for everybody, inclusive of age and uh, race and ability. And it's still going strong, it still does fantastic work, and I love everything that I've seen there. Um, and so I just thank you, Mary Ward, for setting it up. Um, my next choice was Harriet Walter. She's a, a very thoughtful actress, again, who works constantly. Um, 
her really I find her inspiring because of her championing of women's work and of uh, older women she had an exhibition in Stratford um, there is a book you can get a book I've got it um, celebrating older yeah, women right. yeah, she and uh, she's constantly yeah. interested in getting more women into theatre and celebrating women's work um, and I find her I find her to be an inspiring woman thank you Harry my next choice was a bit controversial um, I wanted to include the entire company of Clean Break. Naomi said I was allowed to do this. Yes, in my wisdom. <laughs> in my wisdom, because it is all female. I couldn't find the names of the two women um, prisoners who set it up in 1979. Um, now I'll start again, right? <laughs> okay. My next choice is all the women involved in Clean Break Theatre Company. It was set up by two women offenders in 1979. Um, I, I want to celebrate all the women, the administration, the stage management, the, the women prisoners and the actors who've gone into prisons and the counsellors and all the people who've been involved in Clean Break. Um, I'm probably not allowed to include that many people in as it's only 100 theatre women in total um, and I'm sure many other women have worked for Clean Break and men as well um, but I think they address fabulous, um, not fabulous, they address very important, they address very important issues and I just wanted to celebrate their work for the past decades. Clean Break. My next addition to the list is the lighting designer Paulie Constable. Um, so many shows. The ones that particularly stay in my mind are Amadeus at the Old Vic, um, which was lovely with all that mirroring and the, the angles. Um, the Weir and Blasted as well, Sarah Kane's Blasted. Um, you shouldn't really notice lighting design, I suppose, or maybe you should notice bits of it, but just, just the atmosphere, the care, the attention, um, and the restraint sometimes. Paulie Constable. Thank you very much for all your work. My next choice is Maggie Steed, who I've always thought was absolutely brilliant. But recently I saw her in not particularly huge part at the Donmar Warehouse and she just wiped the floor with all the other actors, I'm afraid to say. She is so wonderful. And it was Trelawney of the Wells and she was just extraordinary and was playing an old grand arm of the theatre and she just did it beautifully. Maggie Steed, thank you. Uh, my next one was Romola Garay for Calico. Um, she blew me away in Calico. I really enjoyed the production, I really enjoyed the play and, and her acting just, she seemed to illuminate every scene, illuminate everything she did and I, I wasn't expecting anything really, I was just going along because it was a you know, a new play and I was interested and uh, came away just thinking she was wonderful and it really does stick in my head even now. Um, so Romola Garay. My next choice is the very sadly missed Annie Tobin. Annie loved theatre. She was in love with it and she used to say that it didn't matter where you worked in the world. What mattered was that you were working and that you were talking to people. She was also amazing at her work with the Actors Benevolent Fund. She would bring beneficiaries to the fund and they would have help um, with whatever they needed. So Annie Tobin, a wonderful 100th theatre woman. Bless you. My next choice was Susie McKenna. Um, because of the wonderful Hackney Empire pantos. Mm. I adore panto and if I've had, whatever I've seen all year I'll kind of vacillate between I love this about theatre or this has really annoyed me. Hackney panto is a pleasure. I find it just mm. to be delightful yeah, it's in its brilliant. purest form. I am transported. I believe everything. I'm with them. I'm all over. I just, I love it. I sit there with 
big eyes just taking it all in. They delight me. And sometimes afterwards I've had friends and I've gone around and said, I love them. And I think they go, yes, thank you, Naomi. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I love these. I love these yeah. pantos. And in that amazing Matcham building in Hackney yeah. Empire, and she's she, with nods to tradition, with modern things, um, with wonderful female characters and, and female performers. Um, I, it, they delight me. Her writing and her direction delights me. And they refresh me. They sort of... They wipe me clean every year. I, it's at Christmas and I think I can start the next year completely in love with theatre again because I've had such a transporting experience at the pantomime. Aww. I love it. Thank you. Oh, no, you don't. I <laughs> don't. My next choice is Sarah Holmes, who is the chief executive of the new Woolsey Theatre in Ipswich. Sarah runs a very tight ship, but when you work there or when you visit the theatre... You're made to feel welcome, you're made, made to feel respected and it's the most fantastic place to work and visit. The shows they do are brilliant and Sarah is fabulous at running it. Thank you Sarah Holmes at the New Wall Z Theatre Ipswich. Hurrah! Hurrah! My next choice uh, was Inez Ben Susan. Yes. Oh. There should be books and statues and plays and t-shirts and bags and, and rollerblades and, and small dogs. <laughs> Everything should be named after Inez Ben-Susan. And I've never Susan. heard of her. Oh, well, now never. you have. Now you have. Um, okay, so Australian actress, um, right. suffragist, worked uh, with the Actresses Franchise League, dreamt of a woman's theatre company, dreamt of a woman's theatrical agency. Um, threw all her energy behind it. She was the uh, head of the AFL's play department. And she worked constantly in, uh, as well. So she was an actress as well as an amazing organiser. And her dreams, that she, they had the Women's Theatre in 1913, and her dream was for that to kind of be rolled out every year and to be rolled out in the States as well. And I love the idea of the Women's Theatrical Agency. She she very much wanted that women shouldn't be judged on their looks, but they should be judged on their talent. And she felt that if it was a an agency run by women, um, people would be cast because they were good. what year was this then? The Women's Theatre was 1913. Um Wonderful. But she's in spotlight. If you look on the, the Twitter feed, 100 Theatre Women, she's in spotlight in yeah. 1939, yeah. age 60, as a kind of character actress. Um, I've been doing a lot of research about the Women's Theatre of 1913 and just reading all the interviews she gave to the press about how fervent her passion was that women should be um, allowed to, to uh, work to their fullest in theatre, both backstage um, on stage, in the administration, in the writing. They had men involved, but men as actors um, on stage and as playwrights, but everything else was to be done by women. And if we'd had that, if we'd had that tradition now, things could have been very different. Inez Ben Susan, I salute you with castanets. My next choice is the casting director, Kay Magson. Um, she respects the work of the writer. She allows actors to do their best in auditions. She likes actors, she likes writers, she likes directors. And every time I've auditioned for her, with her in the room, I always felt that I couldn't have done any better. I wanted to include a casting director because often they are unsung and sometimes actors feel a bit scared of them sometimes and people sometimes diss them a bit. But she is absolutely fabulous. Thank you, Kay Magson. Uh, my next choice was Sally Green, who um, runs the Old Vic, and um, uh, yes, Ronnie Scott yes, in Soho. Yes, in and, of um, I first right. came across her when I was working at the Old Vic as a as a student. And what I really admired about Sally Green was that she has been an she was an actress, and she has respect and authority in the kind of creative side of mm. the business and then respect and authority in the business side and that seemed as a producer it seemed to be one or the other you'd have somebody yeah. who was very creative but a bit kind of flaky and all mm. over the place or you'd have someone who's very business minded but wasn't comfortable with being on stage and being with creative. performers and she seemed to marry those two beautifully I thought it was I remember thinking gosh this is really good this is really clever and she's taken both bits of her experience mm. and her interest and she's putting these together I really admired her as a a strong woman, a woman who spoke with authority, and a woman who was informed. Um, that made a big impression on me at that age. Sally Green. My next choice is the theatre director, Annie Castledine. Annie 
ran theatres like Derby and Theatre Cluid with a plum. She uh, she believed in danger in the theatre um, and yet also extreme control, extreme physicality and control over your physicality. She was committed um, and uh, just a wonderful theatre director and a great woman. Thank you, Annie Castledean. My next choice was Nancy Price, uh, another actress and suffragist who co-founded the People's National Theatre <laughs> in 1930, which um, uh, was first of all based at the Fortune Theatre, then moved to the Duchess, and then eventually moved to the Little Theatre. Um, I've been reading about her and her want to get actors involved and her want to make good work and work that Amazing. was satisfying for actors and satisfying for audiences. Um, I think she was a wonderful woman. So Nancy Price. My next choice is a performance that I never saw live but I've looked at it quite a lot. You can get it on YouTube. This is Billy Whitelaw in Not I. Um, she said that when it was first performed at the Royal Court, they had, it, it is just her mouth uh, for 35 minutes, I believe it is. Um, and it's by Samuel Beckett. It's a wonderful performance. She said people were so terrified of this pitch dark. The, the Ladies Lou sign was turned off. The fire escape was turned off. That people just had to go and escape to the bar uh, to get a, away from this claustrophobic feeling of just this mouth talking Beckett's words um I'm it's one performance that I just wished I'd seen so Billy Whitelaw and for all the work you've done since thank you um my next choice is a wardrobe mistress and costumier called Claire Louise Hardy who I've worked with a number of times um she is a very experienced uh, maker and has taken shows all around the world um, with the RSC um, and works constantly in the West End and uh, also teaches. She has a, a sewing company, she teaches. Um, she is incredibly professional, very organised, super organised, <laughs> um, but very intuitive and very creative. And what she does well, particularly, in, I think, amazingly in tech periods, she she just has a feeling for maybe where things are going to go, has a feeling for breadth, for the creative breadth. So she she stays... She does what she needs to do, but she has an awareness of of some of the maybe the creative flake, occasional flakiness yeah. <laughs> um, around That's things. Wonderful. She's very generous. Um, she's very loyal. Uh, wow. She's consistent. She's an amazing hard worker. Um, I find her an incredible inspiration in, in a lot of areas. She's very good at her job. She's very generous. She's very friendly. She's very intuitive. She's such a professional. Um, so Claire Louise Hardy. Thank you, CL. My next choice is Jane Horrocks. Uh, I saw her at the Young Vic in The Good Soul of Szechuan. I think it was 2010. It was an extraordinary performance. I've always admired her work on film. I've never seen her in the theatre. Uh, she just works and works and works so hard and I did not want her to not be included in the 100 Theatre Women because of all the hard work that she's given the theatre over the years. Thank you, Jane Horrocks. My next choice is the actress Peggy Shaw um, from Split Britches Theatre Company, who I wish I'd seen sort of 30 years mm. ago. I've seen them more recently at the Drill Hall um, and a couple of other venues. And at WOW, actually, last year, she did a one-woman thing. She was developing at WOW. But just her physicality, um, her confidence, her calm, her charm, um, her creativeness... Um, yeah, she, it's a it's a delight to watch. It feels always feels like something special watching Split Britches, but particularly I find her quite mesmerising. She's such an extraordinary, unexpected physical presence, and mixes the sort of these overtones of sort of masculinity and femininity um, uh, beautifully. Peggy Shaw. <laughs> My final seventy fifth. We got there so quickly. <laughs> is Liz Carr. She is the sit-down stand-up wheelchair user Liz Carr. She is hilarious. 
She is now also being used on television as an actor in Silent Witness. Um, she plays one of the bosses and she's brilliant and very scary and formidable and she's wonderful but she is very, very funny and if you can catch her stand up, sit down, then please do. Thank you very much for watching numbers 51 Thank to you. 75 of 130 women. I can't believe we've only got 25 left. It's crazy. What are we going to do with our lives? Do another 100. No. Anyway, um, please comment with your own uh, 100 Theatre Women um, under please this comment. video or on the blog. There's a link below or on Twitter using the hashtag 100 Theatre Women. And thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>